Hi, today I want to introduce you to my Linux driver tutorials. This is a series of videos about how to program Linux kernel modules and Linux drivers. But first, let's briefly talk about what a Linux kernel is. So first, a kernel in general is a hardware abstraction layer. It offers the user space a system call API to do its work. For example, if you're using the open function to open a file, you don't have to care if the file is stored on an SD card or a hard drive. The kernel takes care of it and at the end you have a file descriptor to access your file. Some of the tasks of the kernel are process and resource management, the scheduler or hardware access through drivers. And in this series of videos, we will focus on the hardware access through drivers. So Linux is a monolithic kernel. This means all its functionality and its drivers is built into one big binary. But in order to keep this binary small, we have the ability to expand the kernel with loadable modules. So for example, you can start with a very small kernel, boot it on your system, then check which hopper is available on your system and then only load the driver it needs. So this keeps the kernel smaller. And in my series of videos, we will focus on loadable modules. But if you're interested in how to compile a Linux driver into your monolithic kernel, I've already made a video about this and I will put a link into the description. Okay, so let's talk about the content of these tutorial series. So first I will introduce you to the structure of Linux kernel modules and drivers. We will talk about various kernel mechanisms like linked lists, mutexes, dynamic memory management, kernel logging, and so on and so forth. I will also introduce you to some interfaces between drivers and the user space, such as device files, the sys file system, or the proc file system. We will learn how to interface various hardware from kernel modules, such as GPIOs, I2C, SPI, timers, UART, and so on and so forth. You will also learn how to write drivers for these hardware devices. And I will also give you an introduction to the device tree, how to add devices to it and how to probe from the device tree from within a driver. But it's very important, this is a dynamic and living series of videos, so when I find suitable topics I will add more videos to the series and if I see a video is outdated because the kernel API has changed, I will also remove it or at least label it um, obsolete. Okay. So where do we want to do our kernel programming? Therefore, we will use a Raspberry Pi. And there are basically various reasons why I want to use a Raspberry Pi. The first one is Raspberry Pis are relatively cheap and easy available. Another reason is we have this 40 pin pin header over which we can connect hardware like I2C sensors or GPIOs to it. And another good reason is Raspberry Pi OS. Because Raspberry Pi OS is very easy to configure, you can turn on and off various hardwares quite easily, and you also have some very useful tools, for example, for handling device tree overlays, for example. So here, this is a picture of a Raspberry Pi 3, but you can use basically any Raspberry Pi you want. I would recommend you to use the full 40 pin pin header, because the Raspberry Pi 1 only has, a, I think, 20 pin pin header, I'm not 100% sure. But basically for a lot of the videos you can use any single board computer or even a normal x86 computer. Only if you have to access hardware, maybe you will need some workarounds on other systems or on other single board computers you at least have to use different pins. So here on my tutorials I will focus on um, the Raspberry Pi. Okay, so how to set up a Raspberry Pi for Linux kernel programming? Well, here are basically the instructions. So first I would recommend you to update your packages and then we need to install the kernel headers. The kernel headers are all the header files and make files from the Linux sources we need to build loadable kernel modules. On Raspberry Pi OS we can install them over the package Raspberry Pi kernel headers and this will install the kernel headers for the latest available kernel version on our system. And for the Linux kernel is written in C, so we need to install the GNU C compiler and it's built over a make file, so we need to install make. These packages are normally pre-installed on Raspberry Pi OS, but if not, you can install them by using the build essential package. 
and because the Raspberry Pi kernel headers um, are installed for the latest kernel version and the upgrade may be installed a newer kernel to your system, I would recommend you to do a reboot before you start kernel hacking. Okay, but I think that's enough theory for today. So now let's start kernel programming and I hope I will see you in my next video.